prepared, amen. And I want you to, even as we get ready to go in prayer, what are you expecting from God when you pray? What are you expecting from God's word when you pray? Uh, because that's what you want to do. You want to pray his word. Because that's, that's where the expectation is manifested at, yes. in the word of God. Yes. So let's pray, sweetheart. Amen. Just oh, believe God hallelujah. for the people. For Father, healing and deliverance. Yes, yes. Father God, we thank you for your word. Yes, Father. We thank you that your word is our final authority. Mm. Your word, Father God, ends all disputes. All Father disputes. God. We trust in your word, Father. Hallelujah. God. We're grateful, Father God, that your word <coughs> cannot return to you void. It will not. So therefore, we send out your word, your Father word. God, into the atmosphere. Yes, Father, Father God. God. We send out your word of your healing, word, Father Your word of God. healing you right now. You sent your word and you healed us and yes, delivered us yes, from all destruction. Yes, all destruction. We send out your word of prosperity, Yes, Father God. Father God. You desire above all things, Father mm. God, that we will. Uh -huh. prosper and Ooh, be in glory health, to God. even as our soul Hallelujah. and we send out your word of yes Father, Father God. God you sent your word to set mm. the captives free yes Father Lord God. Hallelujah. we thank you Father God that as the word mm. goes forth Father God the power of yes. the Holy Spirit Father God yes. is releasing understanding yes Father God people that need salvation father right now, god right the holy now. spirit is working right on their now, hearts right now. father god to bring them into repentance yes to yes. bring them father god to a place of yes, decision father, father god, god Hallelujah. where they decide father god to come to the end Ooh, of glow, themselves glow, and glow. receive the salvation that you've provided yes, through your father precious god. Son Jesus Christ. Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ. Thank you for the blood of Jesus. Yes. It ended everything. Yes, it did. It changed everything. everything. Hallelujah. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. name. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless God. Glory. All right. Amen. Well, we're going to get ready to get into the word of God this morning. I want to encourage you to uh, uh, write down what you're expecting from God's word this morning. Write it down. And begin to, uh, uh, begin to meditate upon that. Um, begin to meditate upon. I, I want to encourage you to uh, believe God for your peace of mind. Believe God for your peace of mind. Uh, whether we know it or not, uh, uh, our mind is being uh, attacked by satanic forces. Demonic influences. Um, that's what's really going on right now today is our mind is being uh, attacked, being bombarded with fear, uh, ungodly information. Uh, so we're going to just really get into the Word of God this morning, and we're going to look at the Word of God from an approach where we're still de dealing with uh, biblical, uh, support, uh, biblical solutions uh, uh, for racism. Uh, and really what we're looking at is how that uh, fear, it, it helps to promote racism, division. It, it helps, it, it, it does that. So we're going to get into the Word of God and we're going to just look at the Word of God this morning from a, a, a perspective of really seeing what, how God wants us to really be able to understand what Jesus Christ has did for us. And, and, and if we get a good understanding about that, that will, that will promote the peace of God in our lives. That will release the peace of God in our lives. Understanding what Jesus Christ did for us. Because I'm, uh, not understanding what, what Jesus Christ did for us, amen, it will not allow you to be able to experience the peace of God. Because what he did for us, it brings about peace of mind, peace in our spirit. Amen. A rest. A rest. What Jesus Christ did for us. Amen. All right. Let's go to Ephesians. Our foundational scripture we're going to be dealing with Ephesians, the second chapter, and the 14th and 16th verse. And this is the book of Ephesians. We're going to be reading from the uh, New Living Translation version of the Bible. So for Christ himself has brought peace to us. For Christ himself has brought peace to us. I want you to underline that because we're going to be really looking at that about this peace that Jesus Christ has given us. He brought it to us. He brought it to us. He united Jews and Gentiles into one people. 
the peace of Christ always promotes oneness. It brings, it brings all people groups into one people group. It brings all people groups into one people group. Amen. It unites. It unites. Okay. So uh, he united Jews and Gentiles into one people group. When, he, when, when in his own body on the cross, he broke down the wall of hostility that separated us. He did this by ending the system of law with its commandments and regulations. He made peace. Write that in, focus on that. He made peace. He brought, he made peace. He brought it. He brought what he made for us, peace. He made peace between Jew, Jews and Gentiles against people groups by creating in himself one new people from the two groups together as one body. Christ reconciled both groups to God by means of his death on the cross and our hostility toward each other was put to death. Our hostility, our hatred, our bickering, our division toward each other was put to death in the finished work of Jesus Christ. So what we're going to really look at this morning to uh, something that the Lord spoke to me about, about folks upon that Jesus Christ brought us peace, his peace. He brought us the peace of God. He was, he was God's peacemaker to us. Without Jesus Christ, you don't, we can't have peace with God, and we can't have peace with one another. I was listening earlier this week about they getting ready, to, talking about some peace uh, settlement and peace involvement that they're dealing with over in the Middle East. But uh, without Jesus Christ being recognized and honored in any peace discussion, it's futile. It's not, it's not gonna. It it it. It's not gonna have no lasting impact. It's only through Jesus Christ. He's the only one that can really bring eternal peace because He is peace. He is peace. All right. Pursuing the peace of Christ will destroy. Based upon no, based upon what we're gonna we're looking at on Ephesians the second chapter. We can we can make this statement. Pursuing the peace of of Christ will destroy all spirits of hostility. Pursuing the peace of Christ will destroy all spirits of hostility. Spirits of hostility. What's coming against our peace is spirits of hostility. Hostility. Against mankind's spiritual, moral, and intellectual growth. Against mankind's spiritual, moral, and intellectual growth. So there's spirits of hostility that we got to deal with. We've got to recognize that that's what's coming against us. It's not one another. It's not he this and, and she this and that. It's, that's, that's not our, our problem is not each other. We don't have a people problem. We have a lack of understand, a, a lack of discerning spirits. And we're gonna really understand that the spirit of hostility, the spirit of hatred, the, the, the spirit that makes us hate one another. Amen. All right, let's look at Proverbs, the, the, the second, uh, twelfth chapter, and the twenty verse. Then we, now, we want to stay focused on Jesus Christ is our only peace. He's our only peace. He's our only peace. Peace is the solution for racism. Peace is the solution for division. Peace. The peace of Jesus Christ. Because he is peace. There is no other peace. Without him, there is, you just, you just, you, you just like a, it, that's, you operating with something, you operating with a dull knife. It's not going to cut. It's not going to cut through that spirit of racism or that spirit of hostility and hatred and strife that wants to attack us. It has to come from the person of Jesus Christ. Our peace is a person. 
He says, deception fills the heart of those who plot harm. Now, I want you to look at this. Deception fills the heart of those who plot harm. Deception. And that's what the spirit of, 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 of uh, hostility does. It comes to deceive us about our peace toward one another and our peace with God. Deception. Deceive us about how, you know, we have to realize what we were uniquely designed by God to do was to edify and build one another up. To strengthen one another. To strengthen one another. Mankind was not designed, God did not create man to be a slave. But he did create mankind to serve. That word serve means to edify. To edify each other. To build up, to strengthen each other. Not to be slaves to one another. Amen. Hallelujah. So it says deception fills the hearts of those who plot harm. Anytime, anytime you submit yourself to a hostile spirit, you, you, that hostile spirit is going to cause you to plot harm, create havoc and danger to, toward somebody, another person. But those who plan for peace are filled with joy. But those who plan for peace are filled with joy. You know, now that's telling me you've got to plan for peace. You got to plan for peace. Plan for it. You got to get some instructions how to live a peaceable life with one another. To live at peace with one another. Uh, we have to plan to have peace in our homes. Yeah, I, I, we have to plan to have peace in our minds. And the, and the plan is get into the word. The, the, the instruction for this plan is in the word of God. Because the word of God is our only refuge, our only place of peace. His word, the word of God is filled with instructions for peace. Amen. Peace always promotes harmony. Peace always promotes harmony. Oneness. Amen. But you have to get Jesus Christ. He has to be the center of of our peace. He has to be the center of it. If you don't make him the center, you, you, you're building on uh, 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 unsettled ground, shaky ground. You're building on principles that will not support your, uh, your, 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 your desire for eternal peace, everlasting peace. Amen? So he says deception fills the heart of those who plot harm. You have to realize this is the spirit of deception wants to work against our peace. The spirit of deception wants to work against our peace. In other words, deception, uh, the spirit that wants to deceive us, the lies, you know. <laughs> you can't buy peace. You, and, and you can't tell a lie to have peace. You cannot tell a lie to have peace. Peace requires truth. That's the reason why Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. That's what it requires. That's the requirements to have peace that's going to change everything. Peace will squash, peace toward one another will squash, it will eliminate racism, hatred, strife, division, bickering, arguing. Jealousy. It's impossible for the peace of God to be manifested in our lives and the works of our flesh, uh, our human reasoning and understanding to overtake us. It won't overtake us. Because you have to realize this here. Peace is also a shield to us. It's a shield. Because, the, because why, Pastor, why, why you say peace is a shield? Because peace is the word of God. And the word of God is our shield. It shields us. It defends us. It protects us. It provides for us. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Bless God. Glory to God. Uh, the, the peace of God will shield our mind from any type of racism spirit, any type of spirit of division, any type of spirit of anarchy, hatred, and strife. Amen. All right. Let's go to, now, we, now, now remember, we talked about, we said our foundational scripture, we talked about where uh, that Jesus Christ brought us, he, he, he brought peace to us. He brought the God kind of peace that we need to live the God kind of life. Matter of fact, it's very difficult to live uh, uh, a successful life without any peace. Very difficult. Because where there is no peace, you, you, that the environment, the enemy will invade that environment with confusion. He'll invade it with confusion. He'll invade it with confusion. And yet uh, that's one of the ingredients that makes up racism. Confusion. We're confused about one another. And then the really sad thing about it, we're confused about ourselves. Because, you know, it's, it's very, it's, it's, that's a very confusing spirit to think that you got to elevate yourself to make yourself bigger than, than, than a, another person so you can see yourself, be, you know, you, you this, you are that. Amen. And remember the whole thing about what, what, what peace comes to do, our peace in Christ, it comes to edify one another. Your peace, that's why we want to have peace because it helps us to edify, strengthen, and encourage one another. That's what peace does. It's, it makes us concerned about each other's well-being. Peace does. That's why Jesus said, we are, he said, blessed are the peacemakers for they are what? The children of God. Blessed are the peacemakers, not the division makers, not the, not the, the strife makers. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Uh, let's go to uh, John. Now we're going to go to Jesus now. We're going to look at what he's saying here to us about, remember, because he brought us peace. He brought us peace, his peace. Amen. Amen. All right, uh, John, the 14th chapter and the 22nd, 27th verse, reading from the uh, 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 Passion Translation version of the Bible. Now, this is Jesus talking. Hallelujah. Did I, did I read that statement to you about pursuing the peace of Christ will destroy all? Did I read that? Or oh, didn't read that? Okay, but I want to I want to go back to that again, Minister Ridge. I want to want to reiterate that because that's something I really want you to really get get in your spirit and get in your understanding. Pursuing the peace of Christ will destroy because it's going to help help you understand this next scripture. The scripture we're getting ready to deal with. Pursuing the peace of Christ will destroy all spirits of hostility against mankind's spiritual, moral, and intellectual growth. Amen? I really want you to get an understand. Pursuing the peace of Christ. Because I want you to pursue it. We're going to have to pursue it. We're going to do it intentionally. We have to go for, we're going to make sure that we uh, uh, seek after understanding the peace of Christ. How it, how it is designed by God to impact our lives. To cause us to live free from hatred, free from fear. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Bless God. Because that's something which you have to, really what we have to understand. Uh, fear also comes to disrupt our peace. So you have to be on guard for, for the spirit of fear. And these are our spirits attacking us. We're in a spiritual warfare. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. 
We don't wrestle against different uh, people groups. Different cultures. You know, talk about culture warfare and, and, and it, uh, 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 different um, ideals and everything. We just, we just clash with one another. Why? Because we're not pursuing the peace of Christ. When you pursue the peace of Christ, it's impossible to be at war with one another. I'm, we understand that our main enemy is an evil spirit that's out to seduce, deceive, and disrupt all of mankind. Wants to destroy the fabric, the fabric of mankind. And the fabric is, the fabric of mankind must be made up of, a, must be made up based upon the understanding of the knowledge that we have been given in God. That we are made in his image and his likeness. That's the why you, don't, you want to make sure you don't hate one another. Because what you're doing, you're destroying the image and likeness of God. Are you hating the image and likeness of God? To hate your sister or your brother is to hate the image and likeness of God. To hate what God created. Because God created everything. There's nothing that's created that God didn't create. Now, if you don't believe that, you, you, if you don't believe that the God, of, the God, that God created everything, see, and yet I say God is love. There's no hatred in God. There's no malice, there's no strife, there's no en envy, no jealousy. That, that it's not in God. God is love. That's the essence of him. And love always promotes peace. Now this is Jesus talking to John, the 14th chapter, the 27th verse, reading from the uh, Passion Translation Version of the Bible. It says, I leave, this, I want you to really look at this, uh, this is Jesus talking. This is him talking to the church. He's talking to people that have made a decision that you're going to be the branch and I'm going to be the vine. You're going to depend upon me. You're going to you will depend upon me. Amen. I'm going to be the root, the source of your life. He says, I leave the gift of peace to you. The gift of peace. I, man, when I saw that, I said, that's what I want. That's what I, that's, that's what I like to hear. I leave the gift of peace with you. So really what, what Jesus is trying to get us to understand, his peace is a gift to us. And a gift is designed to make you better off than you were before you got the gift. It's designed to enhance your life. A gift is something that you should, when you receive it, you should have an a, 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 a attitude that you're going to cherish this here. You're going to appreciate it and you're going to value it. Because the person that gave you the gift, they saw some worth and value in you to give you the gift. He says, I leave the gift of peace to you, or with you. I leave the gift of peace with you. My peace is not just any type of peace. Amen. It's Jesus' peace. It's his life. It's his essence. It's his spirit. It's him. It's his word. It's him. Not the kind of fragile peace. Fragile peace. Amen. He gives us peace where our minds don't have to be disturbed. When he puts his peace in our mind, he puts it in there with the intent that our minds will never be disturbed again. Our minds, will, we will not allow our minds to be disturbed with hatred, malice, and strife. We won't, we won't allow our minds to become offended by things. Because that the peace that, that Jesus has given us, it guards our minds. We don't, we don't become easily offended by things. Amen. 
He says, my peace, not the kind of fragile peace given by the world. If you get easily offended by stuff, you have to understand what you, you're living off of is the world's peace. It's temperamental. You want to make, you, you, you want, we need to understand that the peace that God gives us is beyond, it, it guards us from being offended. God us from being offended. And that's something that, you know, we got to really guard ourselves, guard ourselves from is, is that spirit of offense. Because it's running rampant in the church. That you get offended by stuff. Preacher preach to you and say something, say, say something that you don't, you don't, it's in the word. Now, if he's not preaching something that's not in the word, then you need to get offended. But, the, but if he's preaching something, you just biblical instruction from the word of God, and you get offended by what he's saying, or they saying, or she's saying, whatever, they're teaching you about, then you got a problem. You need to go back and check your peace. And, pr- and bring, bring your mind up under the authority of God's word. And that will cause you to have, have the peace that surpasses all human understanding and reasoning. He says, not the kind of fragile peace given by the world, but my perfect peace, but my peace that caused you to become mature, my peace that caused you to become steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the good works of God. Always abounding in it. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless God. But my peace, my, but my Perfect peace. My perfect peace will make you matured. It will cause you to become matured in your understanding of who you are. Once you know who you are, you, nobody can offend you. Nothing what somebody say or, or, or do to you, they can't offend you because you know who you are. You know you've been given an identity, who you are in Christ Jesus, that nothing can offend you. Because you're not, you're not moved by what people say about you. Because you understand uh, you're governed by what your father God has said about you. He said, don't yield to fear. Don't yield to fear. Now, what is, Jesus is wanting us to understand that fear is going to come and attack your peace. Fear. That's why the enemy likes us to become inferior toward one another. Inferior to, in, even inferior about ourselves. See the insufficiency in ourselves. Amen. You know, competing with one another. The spirit of competition does not operate in the body of Christ. We don't compete with one another. We complement one another. We edify one another. We strengthen one another. We build one another up. We encourage one another. Amen. And this is something that's very difficult for a lot of us to understand. Is we should be able to be corrected by one another. To be corrected, to be godly corrected, not just, you know, spurting out words and saying stuff. I'm talking about godly truth. Cor- Godly truth correction. We should be able to, to endure that, to embrace that. Amen. That's part of, that's part of being mature. He says, he says <laughs> uh, uh, don't yield to fear or be troubled in your mind. I mean, in your hearts or really that's in your character. In your character. You have to understand this here, that fear, it will corrode our character. The spirit of fear, it will corrode our character. It's, it'll disrupt it. It'll, I'm say, it'll, weaken our, it'll weaken our understanding of our character is rooted and grounded in Jesus Christ. That's why our character is at. The base of our character is rooted and grounded in Christ. It says, instead, in, in other words, don't yield to fear or be troubled in your hearts. Fear always produces a troubled mind. Fear, all, the spirit of fear, and it's a spirit. 
That's the reason why you have to deal with, with, with fear with the word of God. The only thing that can, can confront and, and, and make fear leave us is faith in the word of God. Operating in faith in the word of God. Operating in faith in the word of God. Amen. Fear, fear cannot stand the faith of Fear cannot stand up against the faith of God's word. You just can't do it. Instead, be what? Courageous. Now, this is Jesus. He's telling us, be, he telling us to be what? To be courageous. To be courageous. Because he, he said, I'm getting ready to leave. I'm getting ready to, to complete I'm getting ready to complete my assignment, what, I was, what, what the Father sent me here to do. I'm going to have to go. But I'm going to leave my gift of peace with you. I'm going to leave it for you. I'm going to leave my gift of peace for you to live in a world that's going to be fighting you, arguing with you, bickering with you, bickering with you, denying you the privilege of being able to live in my peace, challenging the peace that I've given you. But because I gave it to you, it can withstand every challenge that the world presents to you. Because the peace that I give you is greater in you than, he that is, than the peace that's in the world. My peace settles it all. It settles all the disturbance that's going to come against you. Every, every attack that the devil will bring up on your mind, it settles it. It won't work. It won't prosper. But you've got to be willing to pursue it, to go after it. Go after it with the intent that when you got it, you need to understand. You know when you, this is when you know that you, 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 you done settled in and you mature in your peace. When you can be able to give it to somebody else, share it with somebody else. Or you be able to, to, to withstand the pressure that the world is going to bring up on you to, to disrupt your peace. To, dis, to, to cause you to lay it down. Don't want to pick it up. Amen. See, we don't, we, don't, we don't lay our peace down for nothing. For nothing. We don't lay our peace down for anything. You know the reason why? Because our peace is in us. It's in us. And it's settled in us. <laughs> it's settled in us. Say, my peace is settled in me. It's settled in us. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless God. All right. Let's go to Romans, the 14th chapter and the 19th verse. Reading from, now, we're going to be reading from the New King James Version of the Bible for this here. Because what it was saying, we was, telling about, we was talking about pursuing our peace. If you pursue peace, racism cannot overtake us. It will not defeat us. If, you, if we pursue the, the peace that Jesus Christ has given us. Because you know what? Your enemy won't know what to do with you. And, you and, 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 and when it attacks you, all you do is walk in peace. He says, therefore, let us pursue the things which make for what? Peace. Look at this here. He said, therefore, let us pursue the things which make for peace. Now, I want you to understand, a lie don't make peace. So don't pursue after things based on lies and deception. You don't need to lie to somebody to make them be at peace with you. That's a, that's a tactic from the devil. You know, say a, uh, it, 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 uh, a little white lie or what? Don't, it, 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 it's, that's not no, that don't harm, that's not... It's not a harm to, 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 to tell a white lie, tell a, to lie to get peace. That's, that's, you can't find that in Scripture. 
The only thing that's going to bring about the peace that's going to be everlasting is going to be the peace of Christ. It's going to have to be truth. You're going to tell people the truth. Be truthful to people. He said, therefore, let us pursue the things which what make for peace and the things which one may edify another. We don't want you to look at that. Therefore, let us pursue the things which make for peace and the things by which one may edify another. In other words, you want to, only the peace of Christ will build another person up. The peace of Christ, it's, a, it, it, it's, it's designed by God to build us up, build our minds up, to build us up, amen, to build our spirits up. To build our, our, uh, our moral standards up. To build them up to the place where they glorify God. Our intellect. Our intelligence. And that's what the devil wants to corrupt. He wants to corrupt our spiritual understanding of who we are in Christ Jesus. He wants to uh, 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 destroy our moral fabrics. Our moral thinking. Our moral being who we really are. Our character. And then our intellect, where we do crazy things. It's crazy to hate somebody. Hating someone produces a crazy mentality. You have to understand, to hate someone, what you're doing, you're feeding something in your mind that's going to cause you to become crazy, delusional, unstable. So you want to stay away from hating somebody. The only thing that we were designed to hate was evil. We were never designed to hate one another. I'm going to say that again. We were not created by God to hate one another. Why? Because the God that created us, he is love. And he put all, God put all of himself in us to create us. I'm going to say that again because you really need to get that in your spirit. God put all of himself in us when he created us to make sure that nothing about him would be missing in our lives. That he could feel, that he could fully communicate with us, that he could uh, fully, uh, that, uh, that we could fully understand him. Because, so what he did, I'm going to put, God said, I'm going to put all of me in you. I'm going to put my spirit, my intellect, and my morals, my character in you to make sure that we can have communion with one another, that we can fellowship with one another, to make sure that beyond a shadow of a doubt that you are my son, you're my child, you belong to me. You're able to think just like me. You're able to, you're able to reason with me. Hey Amen. So he said, therefore, let us pursue the things which make for peace. What is that thing that makes for peace? Jesus. So in other words, tell him, let's pursue after Jesus, not religion. Not human reasoning. Let's pursue after Jesus. Jesus Christ must be our number one priority in life. The quicker you make a commitment that you're going to learn who you are in Christ Jesus, the, the more effective you're going to be able to live in peace. Because he is our peace. He is the peace of God for us. He is the one that reconciled us back in, re reconciled us back to having a peaceful relationship with God. Jesus did. Not Mohammed, not Buddha, not high Christian, not religion. But Jesus did. You just come into church. If you're not coming to church with the, with the, with the expectation of, of growing in the knowledge of who you are in Christ Jesus, you come into church for the wrong reason. And you'll never be able to be, you'll never be able to be, you'll never find your, your worth and your value in being able to edify the members of the body of Christ. Or you, or really this here, to impact the world, to change the world. 
You got to know who you are in Christ before you can, you know, uh, change the world. All right. We're going to do this last one, Second, Second Peter, the first chapter and the second verse. We're going to be reading from the uh, Amplified Version of the Bible. Now, we, 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 we have to understand this here, that it, it, it is only our understanding of who we are in Christ Jesus it's going to, that, will be, that will help us to be able to, to have peace with one another. That's the only solution for it. That's the only solution for racism, division, hatred, strife. All the, all the ills, all, all the evil that the world is confronted with, it cannot, the solution for it is understanding who you are in Christ Jesus. It's a, that's, that's what's causing that. You don't have an understanding of who you are in Christ Jesus, of what Jesus Christ brought to us. What he has brought to us. He's not bringing it to us. He has brought it to us. The problem is we need to receive it. And you can only receive it by faith. You can only receive it by hearing the good news about Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Hallelujah. All right, 2 Peter, the first chapter in the second verse, reading from the Amplified Version of the Bible, says, Grace and peace, that special sense of spiritual well-being. That special, that's what grace and peace is. That special sense of spiritual well-being. Or really, you could say that spiritual sense of your spiritual well-being. Your spiritual sense, your spiritual knowledge of your spiritual well-being. That God, once you got born again, you come into the knowledge that it is God's will, for you, that, that he has fearfully, that he has reverently, he has reverently uh, caused you to be recreated back into the image and likeness of his son, Jesus Christ. He, was, he, he valued us so much. He had so much concerned about us that, that if we would repent, glory to God, that if we would repent, he would recreate us back into the image and likeness of his son, Jesus Christ. If we would repent, hallelujah. So grace and peace, that has special sense of spiritual well-being. And look at this, it says, be multiplied to you in the true intimate, the true intimate, the true intimate knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. The true intimate. The true intimate. You know, you know how intimate, intimacy comes about by spending time with one another. That's the reason why it's very important. For, we have to understand if we're gonna if we're gonna receive and maintain our peace, we're gonna have to make sure that what we're doing, you receive it by repenting. Our peace that Christ given us, you receive it by repenting. You maintain it by meditating in the Word of God. You maintain it by meditating in the Word of God. The more you meditate in the Word of God, the more you begin to understand who you are in Christ Jesus. You understand that you, you, his peace he's already given to you. You don't have to beg him for it. You don't have to bargain him for it. Amen. All you have to do is repent and receive it by faith and begin to meditate, get into God's word and, get your, and, and allow the word of God to build you up in your understanding that you have been given the peace of God, that he is your peace and the world can't take it away. The world can't take it away. The world cannot take away the peace that Jesus Christ gave us. Why? Because he gave it to us. And he has already defeated the world. He defeated Satan and his kingdom. He defeated Satan and his kingdom. He, over, he overturned the power of Satan's authority to keep us blinded. To keep on pervert, to, to his power to cause us to hate one another, to bicker and argue with one another, to cause us to be inferior to one another. I, I, I want, want, want another person to be inferior to us. 
We want another person to, to think that they're lesser than we are. That's a demonic spirit. That's the devil. The devil conjured that idea. He come up with that deception. God didn't do it. God wants us to be equal with one another. And the, he said, now the only way you can be equal with one another, the only way you can be at peace with one another, you're going to have to accept Jesus Christ. You got to repent. You got to repent of that old nature that, you, that, that the devil gave you. That deception he gave, how he deceived you. Well, you turn on one another. The first thing when, when, when Eve ate of that, that, that knowledge of, 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 of the, the devil's wisdom, immediately she turned on her husband. Went to deceive him. And carries him. Say, hey, let's I, I got this here wisdom. You need some of it too. Amen. We need to understand that. Amen. Don't let the devil corrupt our understanding about one another. That we, we were uniquely designed by God to edify and strengthen and encourage one another. Give the Lord a hand clap. <laughs> Hallelujah. Bless God. <laughs> you're believing this morning that what you've done, you've heard the word of God, and you're going to, you have been encouraged and, and, and empowered to understand that what you're going to, what, what your, your decision now, your life of faith now is to edify one another, to strengthen one another, to encourage one another, to build one another up. And not with lies, not with, not, not with trickery of words, with the word of God. With the word of God. With the word of God. Speak the word to people. Encourage people through the word. And if they get offended by the word, that's, that's, that's on them. But you've given them the word. You've given them the only thing that's going to settle the peace, that's going to settle the confusion, or, or, or set them free from the confusion that's in their lives. That's the word of God. That's Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the word in person. He is the living word. He's a spoken word. Jesus is. Father, we thank you right now that in the name of Jesus, your word has penetrated the understanding of people right now. People now are willing to understand that Jesus Christ is the only source of peace for their lives. We can't have peace any other way. We have to welcome him into our lives. And when he comes in, he brings peace. He brings peace. Peace has the ability to heal us, heal the brokenness in us. It has the ability to set us free from the spirit of fear. A lot of people are living up under the fear that they're going to catch this coronavirus, uh, uh, COVID-19, whatever this, this disease. People are right now, you're living up under the fear that you're not going to make it through this here. But I decree and I declare to you right now that as you accept Jesus Christ through repentance, some things you need to repent of. You need to repent of. You need to change the way you think about things. And make a decision. I'm going to start thinking that Jesus Christ has given me his peace. And I let go of all the fear. I, I, I let it all go. 
I let go of trying to, to, to control my life, to do things my way. I let it all go. I let go of my thinking. And by faith, in the finished work of Jesus Christ, I accept Jesus Christ as my peace with God. I'm at peace with God because I repented. I asked him to forgive me for doing things my way, orchestrating my own way of life. I repent of it. I let it go. I let it go right now. I let go, I let go of making decisions for my life. I let it go. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. I want you to believe God right now. Believe it. You were sincere in your heart when you said, I let it go. I repent of it. I realize I'm in desperate need of the peace of Jesus Christ in my life. I'm going to stop faking that I'm at peace. I'm going to be, from this point on, I'm, I commit to being sincere about pursuing the peace of Jesus Christ in my life. I will pursue it. I get my life in order. I set my house in order. I set my mind in order. For this day, the peace of Jesus Christ has come into my life. This day, Things have changed. And I'll never be the same. I'll never be the same. I will not go back to my old way of living. I will not go back to being a slave to my old way of living, my old lifestyle, thinking lesser of myself. Listen to the word of God and obey it. And let it clean up every area of my life. Set me free from every ungodly behavior, every ungodly addiction, every ungodly relationship. every ungodly relationship. And from this point on, my life will be governed by the peace of Jesus Christ living in me. And yes, you can. You can let it go. Don't listen to the lies of the devil. You can let it go. You can be set free from that. Because Jesus Christ has already set you free. Just exercise your faith in him. Trust him. Trust him. He's already, he's made the way for you to be set free. Because he is the way. He is the truth. Just believe it right now. Just believe it right now. Just believe it right now. He's setting you free from every 
evil moral behavior. He's setting you free from it. And he's giving you his righteousness. His righteousness. Thank you, Father. We thank you right now that, Father God, that they've received and they've, they've, they've accepted it right now. It's, it's done in Jesus' name. They'll never be the same. They will never be the same. They will never be the same. They will never be the same. I want you to repeat that after me. I will never be the same. You that are watching and listening, I will never, I've heard the good news about Jesus Christ, that he is my peace, and I will never be the same. I will never be the same. Thank you, Father. Thank you right now. Well, we'll let you know that we love you. We appreciate God for you. And we just believe in God that you're going to just uh, receive everything he has for you. And remember, here at Dominion Life Worship Center, there's always a warm seat of welcome here for you. Amen. You need to come and get in your warm seat of welcome so you can enjoy the word of God live and in person. So you can enjoy the word of God live and in, purpose, in, in person. Amen. With purpose. Amen. With God's purpose operating in your life. So I always remember here at Dominion Life Worship Center, Jesus is Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless God. So we'll see you.